Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Rivet Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Catelier, an architect, a BIM specialist, and the founder of the website RivetPure.com. Rivet Pure Live is a show where we help you become a better Rivet user. Sometimes the show is all by myself, and sometimes there are guests coming to the show to share their expertise, like is the case today. So before we get going, uh, hello to everybody in the chat. So as usual, if you can type where you're from, already some people have typed it in. We have James from Southern California, uh, Z Hazadi from France, Neil from India, Leila from Germany, and Ben from Algeria. So always curious to see where are people watching from. All right, before we move on with our guest, um, a couple of quick things. Uh, Work first, and evolving them into solutions. Uh, this season of Rivet Pure Live, the second season, is sponsored by Enscape. And I like Enscape so much that I've actually contacted them to, to see if they would sponsor the show because I've been using uh, their product since, since a while, since 2017, I think, uh, in some of the first versions. And I'm really amazed by the way the software has evolved. All my little gripes with the software first, they've fixed them. And the Enscape keeps evolving and getting better. So if you're looking for great renderings using Revit, it's a tool I would strongly recommend. And the team at Enscape provided a 10% deal for Revit Pure Live listeners. You can have, um, you can find the deal, claim the deal if you have a look at the links in the description of the video. All right, so again, that's uh, Enscape, one of my favorite rendering tools for Revit. Uh, check it out. Yeah, also, um, learn.revitpure.com. It's the course I've been creating in the last uh, five years or more. And you can have a look at our more recent course that is called Manage, Revit Pure Manage. It's a course for intermediate to advanced Revit users or people that uh, want to become BIM managers at their firm. So uh, you can find more information there. We have the full table of content. Uh, some of the content you can preview, watch uh, the videos and uh, learn more about it. Uh, so if you're interested in becoming a BIM manager, mostly using Revit, have a look at this course. You can also find our beginner's course and another one called Design for people that want to use Revit as a presentation tool. And uh, yeah, yesterday I've released a new blog post. Uh, I got a good question from a reader that was how you can create colored revision clouds. So if you go to revitpure.com, go to the blog, you will find this whole blog post that was pretty fun to create. All right, all right, all right. Uh, we'll be slowly moving on to the guest. So today's guest is Nico G. Nico graduated from Lim Kok Wing University of Creative Technology in Malaysia with a Bachelor of Architecture in 2014. He is a BIM manager with an architecture background. Since 2019, he has been working at CPU Pride in Moscow as a BIM manager and the head of the BIM department. Nico is also a fellow BIM YouTuber. He uses his popular channel to teach complex Revit modeling strategies and to share everything he knows about um, the BIM universe. So welcome to the show, Nico. Hello, Nick. Uh, thank you for uh, introducing me. Uh, yeah, uh, I finished actually the link cooking, but actually this is not my first university. The first university I finished in Moscow as mm -hmm. engineer. So this is, was my like secondary, uh, secondary graduation. So uh, yeah, yes. So you, you started in engineering. So you went yeah. to architecture after that, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, like like my mom said, uh, if you will uh, learn something uh, much easier than engineer, you will become lazy. That's why mm -hmm. she chose to architect uh, in Malaysia, and that's why mm -hmm. I finished that. Yeah, and how did, did you get interested in BIM? Uh, thanks for Malaysia because uh, they're trying to, uh, how to say, getting something new stuff for uh, their student and the BIM, uh, actually, especially Archicad in that time, they in so much introducing like open beam, IFC, like uh, all the beam stuff around and uh, 
from that moment, uh, I started to learn what is that beam. It was just a hobby. It was just uh, something interesting for me. And uh, in the end, as you can see right now, I'm BM manager. So mm -hmm. I cannot say uh, I get the vision what I want to do. I just following my hobby. That's it. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. And so how is the, the BIM situation in Russia? We've uh, chat a little bit about it before. Uh, before the show. Uh, situation in Russia. So I can say they were really, really in time. So uh, how to say? A government still not uh, not approved, but in the next year they. Uh, I I think I've lost you for a moment. I might have lost your mic. Sorry, Nico. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Just a moment. I think there might be an issue with uh, with the sound. Nico, I cannot hear you. I don't know why. Uh, I cannot hear you. I, I it's, it says you're muted. It says that your iPad is muted, Nico. All right, bear with us. We should be fixing this little issue soon. Or do you want to try to uh, reconnect? With uh, at, at least with uh, <laughs> Scar DXS technology. Yeah. Oh, I, I've heard you for a moment. Yeah, you can hear me, but from another microphone. So if this is oh, okay. okay let... Oh, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, sure. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what, what I'm starting to say, like about BIM in Russia. So what we can mm -hmm. say, it's not like in UK, but uh, the government's trying to do something uh, to push uh, the markets uh, to follow like BIM standards. And from the next year, they uh, asking uh, if you want to get approved from the government for a building, you should you should do the BIM model. So I can say we are on the way. That's it. But uh, all the right. market uh, really seeking about the beam managers because uh, in our market uh, we don't have uh, quite enough the good beam managers. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, yeah, last question before we get going: How? Yeah. Why did you decide to start a YouTube channel? Uh, to be honest, <laughs> in one day I just uh, thinking like I will forget everything if I not will uh, try to teach people how to do something in Revit. Especially mm -hmm. Revit, this is my um, uh, primary problem. So, and uh, it was just starting like a hobby. To uh, if I will, uh, if I will have enough the skills to introduce to another guy how to do something in Revit, uh, it means I understand it. Uh, I understand it uh, perfectly. So it just was hobby. And right now, as you can see, it's still the hobby, but uh, with some some future. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And what I found as well is that uh, teaching something is uh, often the best way to learn it by yourself. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes the, the, the topic that I decide to teach is I might struggle with at first, but by trying to teach it, uh, you learn more about it. So, all right. So I will just making sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you share your screen again? We are yeah. seeing you. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here we are. All right, there you go. So we can see your screen now. Okay. And so yeah, yeah, the 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 reason I was uh, yeah somebody in the chat asks uh, please share your YouTube channel name. It's just Nico G, right? Yes. All right. And yeah, the reason I. I asked about complex modeling is, as I was saying before we started, I don't do that much um, advanced modeling these days. You know, the part of the BIM manager job is more dealing with uh, data. 
And so I do model, but what I saw, everything you've been doing, I thought that was really interesting, especially when it comes to adaptive components, which I played a little bit with, but I'm definitely not an expert. And you, you seem to be doing some magic uh, uh, with these families. Actually, I also not so not the wizard to creating some magic here with the adaptive families, but I'm trying to do. Actually, as I said before, uh, the uh, as you understand, uh, I think everyone here understands. Uh, architect should create something. Architect don't uh, they shouldn't uh, spend a lot of the time to understand how to create, for example, some models, because uh, it's not their job. Uh, in, in my in my opinion, uh, I think uh, other pe pe people thinking in other way. But in my opinion, architects shouldn't uh, spend a lot of the time for the modeling. But uh, they think uh, who will do that. So in my case, I'm doing all the some complex stuff uh, in my company. Uh, let me I will first uh, show the some the complex project. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, my company allowed to introduce to your audience this build this building this is building already under construct uh the design of the, this building was finished by young Helmut. i think everyone knows him uh so and first if, if you will look here you will see some kind of simple uh facade but if you will have a look more closely you will see first you will see the dots so it means it's already adaptive adaptive families but nothing nothing special on the first look but if you will go to the some section view you will see it's it's special because uh, it's not just a panel here we have like connections for this panel we have an internal panels so it's a lot of stuff inside and uh, the uh, customer want to calculate everything and this is a terrible you should somehow to create uh, your visual view I mean the visual style of your building, and also you should put information also in uh, this panel. It's kind of uh, hard for the just uh, architect, just average architect, and that's why it's uh, going. It's, it should do um, for my side. So let me will show you just some panels, or let me will start from the some simple thing, and we will back to this project because I have another one, one more project, uh, and I will show you today. So why actually we need uh, adaptive families uh i think uh, everyone uh, will agree with me because uh, the simple is more or we can say like uh, less is more whatever but uh, the this idea it means you should create something simple and after that by just one parameter you can change it like i don't know like you will change it the height it was 1,000 to 2,500, and you can see it's changing. Uh, so the power thing you can manipulate also with this data by Dynamo. So just right now, I just changing this panel manually, right? So I'm going to the just um, um, to the parameters, and I'm changing everything here. So like even the 5,000 millimeters, why not? So and it's totally changing, and it's now different panels. Uh, we can get something more interesting, something like that. As you can see, I, I did some uh, some simple presentation. We have like a simple one uh, shape with adaptive family, and we can get something like that, even the flat one. So yes, of course, we can do it manually, but also we can use Dynamo. And Dynamo, I will show you two today. So the one thing uh, what I'm following in my uh, in my work when I'm working with the facade. If you can do something uh, simple, do it simple. Because uh, as you can see, here's a lot of the points. And uh, in one day, it will be hard to understand which is point what doing. Uh, for example, the client asking us creates here the one, one more thing. I don't know, let me create it right now. I will hide every, all my mm, genetic model. I don't need it right now. And you will see what's going on internal this geometry. As you can see here, it's one more geometry. It has a lot of different geometry, but uh, outside is really simple. And as you can see, here is the skeleton of our uh, adaptive family. And it's here really a lot of the points. So let me create right now the new uh, yes. adaptive family. 
Sorry, yeah. Nico, I, I, I'm wondering, what, what is the difference between uh, the, the blue points and the, and the black points in, in this kind of family? Oh, yeah, nice question. Uh, blue points and the other points, so as you can see here, we have the number. My another microphone working right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 no, I kind of hear you twice now. Right now it's better? Yeah, yeah, it's better, yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry, guys. No problem. The blue points, it's uh, let's call it like main one because uh, you will manipulate. This is a adapt adaptive family, it means it will be ad adopted by what by these points. So, uh, it's I should introduce uh, by, by some project, it will be better to understand what's going on. Give me a second. Okay, here we have some uh, empty project. Here, nothing as you can see, I just created. And let me, I will now export uh, with the, another project. I have a lot of the projects today, so that's why I'm trying. Here, so as you can see, the new project. I will import the, my family here. And uh, actually, oh, is it that? No, import. Yeah, to this project. I wanted to 3D, sorry, guys. And component, and as you can see, here is the my family. And uh, the blue points, it's the point where you will uh, place your uh, future adaptive family. As you can see, we're waiting us so when we will place it. And there, in my family, I have six uh, adaptive points. So I should place it six times. I should click it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's really slowly. But once you will create it, you will get error message. Because uh, why? Uh, because my panel not working just for the free form. I did right now the just free form. It's working for it's kind of like this form, as you can see. You should create really uh, just a rectangular one. And only after that, the, the my panel will create it. Uh, the thing with the adaptive family, uh, why nicest thing? you creating your own rules what does it mean uh not it's not uh, by rabbit working it's uh, working by your own rules if you're creating the rules like i did uh, for example if it not will be rectangular it will be corrupting it will be or just flying away so uh, it's it was just my rules but we can change this game for example uh, with this panel <laughs> it's impossible i think to change this game actually because I have a lot of the uh, reference link here. So, but what we can do, as you can see here, I have the point number two. We can actually unswitch it off here, then make it adaptive. Right now it's not any, uh, right now it's the point number two, it's not adaptive one. So it means we will place this point. After that, we will place the second point. And after that, the third point is here. And we can switch it off also this point. So now we have only the four points to place it. Let me have load it inside the game and you will see how it's working. Let me go to the top side view and it's working like that. One, where is that? Two, three, and four. And it's again corrupting, but it's okay, it's working, still working. Let me go do like this. It's still working. And as you can see right now, we have four points here. And here we also have the four points because I just changed the my um, model. So here is, uh, it's not so interesting like uh, as I want to show you the, another type of the panel. It will be really interesting. It's here. As you can see, here is the, also the simple panel. If I will go inside, I will show you. If you will go inside this family, it's also the simple panel, but this now adaptive panel have the network. The previous one, it didn't have, that's why it's called the adaptive one. But this panel, it's also adaptive panel because as you can see, still we have the adaptive points. But with this type of the panel, we can do, we can actually combine Revit curtain wall and we can combine uh, adaptive uh, family, uh, let's say stuff. So we can combine this uh, kind of these tools. But nicest things, uh, as I said before, it's uh, about the, your own rules. My rule for this panel, as you can see, is changing the, uh, it's changing the angle of the panel. And we can now manipulate with this panel by dynamo. 
or give me a second, I will open my dynamo. It's a bit slowly. I don't want to rush actually. That, that's a different uh, adaptive component, but this time it's uh, a window, right? Yes, yes. It's, mm -hmm. uh, right now it's window on uh, on uh, person wall, but still this is adaptive family. But what and, it's, and so for what well, we understand the blue point is normally when you uh, import Revit, you have to click uh, one time for each blue yeah. point. But in your case, uh, that this seems necessary or you have to do it, but it's not really, really using this feature. It's not using because we should create uh, in my in my case, we should create first uh, shape of mm -hmm. our future facade. And after that, we should uh, change uh, this uh, form to the mm -hmm. network mode. And only after mm -hmm. that, you can place your uh, family. So it's mm -hmm. working like that. Maybe later on, I will try to create it because I should create the shape, something like that. OK, so what's going on here? Uh, give me a second. Uh, I, I just checking is it uh, this uh, node or not? Yes, I think this one. Yeah. So we can manipulate with adaptive families uh, much more than you think. Once you will create some your idea, as you can see right now, it will be changing randomly. The panel will be changed the angle. Uh, it could be interesting because uh, if you will do it manually, I think you will become crazy. As you can see, it's what changed. <laughs> uh, I create my own rules, uh, and as you can see, this rules now right now was working. But our straight facade became more interesting. I yes. Think all that, yeah. You. So. Uh... Okay, so, so you is it a parameter inside the adaptive family that is changing? Yeah. Is the angle parameter? Yes, this is a no, actually not angle parameter. This is a bit tricky thing. Uh, let me mm -hmm. show you. Uh, okay. In Revit, it's really terrible uh, trying to manipulate with angle because Revit uh -huh, sometimes yes. not understand why it should be rotate. So that's why I'm not uh, trying to, to use uh, the angle at all. I mean, manipulate this angle. Actually, I'm using the offset. Here we have the offset, as you can see. Sorry, it's, uh, here, today will be a lot of the rational language. I'm sorry, guys, because I mm -hmm. cannot the, uh, change spelling. So uh, as you can see here, I will translate you. It's for free. Uh, here's the offset, 250. I can immediately change it. And it's kind of will be changing the angle. But actually, it's not angle changing. We're changing just offset on the of the one side. That's it. So and after that, I'm manipulating with this data in Dynamo, creating the random uh, offset. And uh, when you looking now on the facade, you are thinking like, oh my god, it's rotating with some angle different. Oh, angle. okay. So so okay. So and so you're changing the offset value instead of the angle. So are you? Yeah. Since it's adaptive family, are you? Uh, you still using reference planes, or it's a specific components uh, from adaptive uh, component families? Uh, this one also using the reference planes, so you can see here, mm -hmm. uh, just dividing by surface. But uh, this type of the family, we no need uh, creating the nodes. If mm -hmm. uh, someone don't know what is mean nodes, you should go here to display the properties, and you will find it here nodes. Uh, we are not using it here. We I just created here adaptive. Uh, family on my uh, network, as you can see. So, but right now, as you can see, the uh, size is the same for all of the levels, it's same offset. I should uh, again use Dynamo to make it uh, different. Okay. Uh, I, I do have a, an interesting question from uh, Scholar DX. Uh, overall, do adaptive slow down the Revit performance? Whenever I create adaptive, Revit performance take a hit massively. Often I have to uh, do small portions of the current wall, current wall in order for adaptive to play nicely. What uh, do you think? I have the real project right now. You can see it. It's like mm -hmm. 1,050 of uh, 150,000 uh, square meter of building, mm -hmm. and as you can see, it's really tall building. And we have here the, a lot of the adaptive families, not only the on the um, ground side. Mm -hmm. We also have the, it's on this side because Jan Helmut, when he was uh, thinking about this building, he also the thinking um, about the angle. You will see it here. So it's also adaptive family we are using on this corner because we don't have any chance to use, for example, the curtain one. Uh, as you know, guys, the curtain, uh, the walls in Revit, we are able to make an angle only in newest, uh, newest one. 
uh, it's 2021 or 2022. I, I, I oh, it's slanted uh, yeah. walls here. It's, I, I forgot which version it's uh, they did uh, to able to use this. Yeah, I, I think it's 2021. Yeah, and this project yeah, is 2020. This project was finished in 2019. So we don't mm -hmm. have any chance. We should use only a vector fund. Even the form, uh, you can ask. So we can use the form and uh, use form like a link. Uh, surface but also it's not working because uh, for example if something will change here on this part i think i mean uh, the building becoming more smaller you should change the form and it will be approximately data we cannot use approximately data to, for the manufacturer for the mm -hmm. calculation for our client because client we still constructing but client already paying the money for the uh, manufacturer these uh, panels Mm -hmm. to create these panels so <laughs> if we will uh let's say if we will wrong with the type of the panels it's a lot of the money we will lose uh -huh. and do you start with uh massing to create uh, the the messing tool to create uh, the additive components yeah, everything uh, here we starting from the messing here on mm -hmm. the messing forms uh, I, I tell you one more thing uh, the first stage of this um, of this project was has been done in Archicad. <laughs> okay. Because it was more faster to create uh, just idea to represent it, and only after in the next stage we should already submit some data to our client, and only in the next stage we redo it in the Revit. We redid it in Revit. Ah, oh, so you started in Archicad. So are you do you use Archicad a lot? Pretty fun, uh, yeah, pretty a lot we are using. Yeah, I can say we are using 70% it's the Revit and 30% it's the Archicast. So oh, interesting. But interesting. Uh, to be honest, uh, for the beam, it doesn't matter which type of the software you are using. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just matter the result, what you will get. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I hear the already people saying like it's uh, starting from the 2021. Yeah, 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 the slanted walls. Okay, so, uh, yeah, guys, uh, if you are using the uh, adaptive family, it will be, uh, you can see it, it's really slow, because my, my PC is really powerful, and uh, I understand on the average PC, it will be totally slow. So, for that thing, uh, I prefer to use, uh, and maybe you also to prefer to use um, work sets. <laughs> okay. All the of all the adaptive family right now we are uh, placing to the one work set and uh, if you're not working with the facade you just switching off. Revit have the secret thing: if you switching off the um, work set, it's uh, not saving in your RAM memory. Mm -hmm. It's going out of the, your uh, RAM memory. So we are kind of saving uh, powerful our PC. Uh, performance of a four hour PC. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, because yeah, usually the advice is not to use work set for visibility. But but in this case, it's for a performance. So if uh, you want to uh, not be slowed down too much. Yeah, as yeah, you can exactly. see, I don't have here the work sets uh, with the name like, uh, you know, there's some people really like creating the work sets with name like Peter, James, but not yeah. <laughs> RVT, like as you can understand, this is Revit files and DWG. Mm -hmm. What we should do? Uh, DWG is still using the questions if we have building. Uh, oh, there are one more question, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, and Damir asks if we have a building, is it better to do the messing forms in messing family or edit and place family inside the project environment? Uh, again, this is my opinion. Uh, how many B managers, the, all B managers have different opinion, but uh, I don't like to use the family inside. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. family in place, I don't like to use. You know, just one thing why I don't like it, because it's hard to manage. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Uh, if I, for example, if I have the family, it's uh, really easy to create the revision of this family. But if you have like a uh, family in place, uh, it's totally hard to create any revision. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, would you mind showing uh, the, the script, the Dynamo script again? Uh, uh, yeah, let me go if, back. If it's not too far. It's not too far. I should <laughs> just uh, give me a second. It's really hard to switching uh, my interface, my standard interface in one language uh, for the YouTube. Uh -huh. 
really hard to switch it. Yes. Okay, it's here. It's just simple script uh, with the. C can you ma the maximize it so we can yes, see yes, it? Yes, yes. Still yes, thinking sure, that because uh, right now it's a lot of the project for you guys. I, I have to open. Just let me give this some seconds. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Oh, it's regenerating. Uh, oh my God, it's regenerating for these panels. Okay, it will take a, a bit time. I, of course, I will show you. Uh, Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, as, while it's loading, do you have any tips to deal with super big files? No, because it's automatic. Uh, as you can see, it's taking the automatic, and uh, I just mm -hmm. in my Dynamo script, and uh, he recalculating all the panels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's the that's the thing. Okay, here is the maximize. As you can see, here is just taking the my data, uh, actually taking the my family. Uh, getting the parameter which is uh, I want to change. I will translate. This is means offset. Mm -hmm. So left side offset. It will translate uh, directly. And uh, here just randomize it and uh, shuffle it in uh, all the data as you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the the part where you randomize it's uh, the the shuffle node, right? Yeah. I prefer to create some uh, list of data as you can see here is the list of the numbers. And after that, just uh, shuffle it and that's it. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, we can uh, we use uh, actually the, the standard uh, node from the Dynamo uh, random, but uh, there are a lot of the, uh, other things why I don't prefer it to use. And as you can see, we have the uh, left side of set and right side of set, and uh, it's automatically uh, choosing which is here. Is also, as you can see, shuffle. That's it. It's really simple to use. Mm -hmm. I think uh, everyone who trying to learn Dynamo, you should start from some uh, these small things. Just change only one data, and you will become pro for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Well, the way I teach Dynamo, I always start with just uh, modifying parameters of elements, uh, because I think like creating geometry is a little more complex. But just modifying uh, parameters is a great way to get started. So the, the script is is more simple than uh, than I thought. It's just randomizing uh, values. Mm -hmm and then mapping them to the adaptive components. I said before, simple is, um, is more. And uh, mm -hmm. I really uh, follow this. Uh, I'm trying to follow this uh, theory because uh, if you're trying to do something complicated, uh, when you will become, uh, then you will came this to project uh, in one, after one year, for example, you not will understand at all what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So here in other, in other panels, in other stuff, the panels, I think it will be more interesting also for the audience. Uh, as you can see here, it's also the only one parameter which is manipulating with this panel. It's the opening. So, and for this one, I'm using already Dynamo. Let me use also Dynamo. Oh, I think it's not going to take a lot of the time. I hope. Uh, and here's the alpha, alpha map. So here actually I'm using the some uh, black and white uh, mm, uh, JPEG file. Where is that? Here. For example, here I have some uh, JPEG files. For example, this one, this one, this one. And by this uh, type of the files, we can, for example, uh, create some pattern. Not only the pattern, we can make some offset. Uh, only your imagination is limitless. Or you can think, uh, you can create anything what you want with this idea. For example, let me, uh, I will change this pattern uh, to another one. Let me will use, for example, give me a second. Let me use, for example, this pattern. Oh, we are already using it. This one. Let's say OK. And as you can see, right now, it's we get. Actually, it's not the. It's um, kind of like an ellipse we get, but uh, we should think more about the this simple code. But as I said before, it's it's really simple dynamo, uh, dynamo stuff here. You can, I think, uh, spend like uh, maybe an hour to understand how it's working. So, and we are using this alpha map. So it means uh, all, we uh, creating our panels, we opening our panels only where we have the white color. Here we have the white color, and as you can see, my panels opening here in the middle. So, uh, what else I can? I can does, does it create a void extrusion in, in the middle of the panel? How does it work yeah, yeah, inside yeah, the family? I can, I can show it. Oh my God, I forgot all this uh, because it's 
let me I will go inside to the family and here is the family and as you can see here is the void and void are intending on this uh, reference line that's it uh, void changing by this parameter here is the radius of the void for example 900 900 millimeter and it's changing that's it so as i said before simple <laughs> mm -hmm. so so but the the image does it affect like a single panel or is it creating an effect on on the all all of them all of For, them right yeah it's taking uh actually where is that it's here and where's the my dynamo i want to show you mm -hmm. we are taking the size as you can see image the pixels we are taking the size of our uh alpha map and after that we are uh, transferring this alpha map to the hour as you can see here to the whole hour panel and as you can see it's not quite not enough because we should uh, use actually much bigger uh the map and that's why we have here the uh, the opening we shouldn't have actually but we have because uh, the my map it's not in size i was rushing sorry guys <laughs> uh, okay yeah can you try another image again, just uh, just for fun, just so I can yeah, see again what yeah, it does? Yeah, no, but I can change. Uh, you can uh, actually you can send me any uh, type of the alpha map if you want. <laughs> All right. And so pe people in the chat, uh, send a link to an image if you want something special. For example, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, something weird. For example, yeah, like that. It's recompiling, and as you can see, <laughs> that's really cool. Manually, it's really yeah. After this logo, we can use it now. It's black and white. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So, do do you have is that is that something you can share the uh, the this Dynamo script? Yes, why not? So, so this is really simple. I can share. Or I, I or send it to me, and I'll add it to the show notes later. Because <laughs> even me, I I kind of want to play with this uh, this script now. Okay, I will do it. So it's. It's okay. Uh, give me a second. I wanna. Uh, yeah, the other desk logo. The, the yeah, the new logo. <laughs> yeah, so, somebody said that the new logo looks like the the Billabong logo, like the, yeah. the, sk the skate <laughs> skate uh, boarding uh, clothing uh, company, and, it, and it's true. Once I saw that, it's uh, very similar. It's uh, no, it's uh, just a mirror. It's, uh, so we should think about that. I should mirror it here, but it's okay. I, I don't want to spend for this time. But anyway, you can see uh, it's trying to follow your alpha map. Mm -hmm. So, and as you understand, if you have really huge building, if you want to create something like, uh, uh, I don't know, like a Zaha Hadid style uh, facade, uh, manually, it's really hard to do. Uh, by math, uh, to be honest, uh, algebra, uh, some people already forgot how to, for example, what is it, uh, sine, cosine, they already forgot about that. By mm -hmm. alpha map, this is much easier stuff. <laughs> yeah, and um, have you played with uh, Rhino and Grasshopper? Do you have any thoughts on you know Revit, yes. uh, Dynamo, or uh, Rhino or Grasshopper? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, yes, I already played. So I cannot compare actually again uh, to be honest because um, actually for me Dynamo it's a part of the Revit. Mm -hmm. And actually, Dynamo, it's mostly about working with data. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I, this was my uh, really, really old project. Uh, I also, I'm working, as you can see, with the panels uh, and uh, uh, with the adaptive panels. And the idea was uh, transferring all these adaptive panels to the uh, grasshopper, manipulating with all data there. And after that, um, just covering form in Rhino. As mm -hmm. you can see, my form we are trying to cover, and we get uh, and transferring this data back to the Revit. As you can see, we get something like that. Uh, right now, I have only the one project, uh, real project, uh, where I using the uh, Rhino, uh, Rhino Insight, only one, uh, because uh, it's actually taking a lot of the time, and the result sometimes we need to get uh, yesterday, not tomorrow, yesterday because client calling to you and saying you should finish yesterday uh for example here as you can see we get here the egg shape i i have the tutorial on my channel and uh, this was real tutorial because as you can see this was i'm um, using the right inside for this type of the shape well what i can say about the right inside and dynamo uh, i cannot compare it's uh they have the same idea but um, 
Rhino inside it mostly for designers. It's mostly for the shape. It's not for the working with data for me. But Dynama, it's working with data and not for the shape, not mostly for the shape. You cannot create easily like in Rhino shape or by Dynama. It's really hard to do that. But it's really simple to you manipulate with data in Reddit, as you can see. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, yeah, sure. Or if you want to create a geometry, you you can uh, do it with adaptive components and parameters like like you've done. My idea, I'm trying to use uh, as maximum as I have. For example, if in Revit I have some tools, I'm trying to use these tools because this is native tool for the Revit. Uh, in some kind of uh, cases, like I'm showing to you right now, uh, in uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, for these cases, yeah, this is I don't have any choice. I'm using the right inside. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, logging on late. Okay. So uh, also, for example, uh, but anyway, for for example, right inside, and uh, uh, if you're using the Archicad, you don't have another choice. You are using the Rhino, uh, Rhino and the Grasshopper. It will be best uh, choice for you guys. If you are using the Revit, you have Dynamo. So. Sorry, <laughs> it's, yeah, I just trying to transfer my opinion. Uh, here, uh, yeah, you project. have a lot of big projects open at the same time, right? That is going to be uh, yeah. RAM consuming. Yeah, right now I have like three or six. Uh, as you can see, it's mm -hmm. taking the half of the my <laughs> RAM. <laughs> How much RAM do you have? At 32. Okay. Uh, but guys, as you can see, I have the, a lot of the opening projects. It's real projects. It's uh, huge buildings. Uh, why it's still working? Your first question should be, why it's still not lagging uh, a lot? Because uh, we are using the, as I said before, work sets. If you have something, for example, like the adaptive points, uh, like adaptive panels, you should place it, put it to the work sets and switch it off. If you will do it, if you will do it, uh, you have a chance uh, to save your RAM. What is the spec of your computer? So, so um, you're you're saying with uh, work sets you can, uh, yeah, save your RAM if you have very big projects. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I actually, as you can see, even here I have the work sets. Give me a mm -hmm. second. Here, I don't want to save. <laughs> Even here, I have not a lot of the work sets, but I have. I, I will transfer, translate really fast. Here's the facade one, here's the facade two, here facade three. <laughs> and as you can see, all these facades uh, inside in the work sets. Yeah, yeah. So you've heard it, guys. The work sets are not for visibility. They are for uh, performance, especially like on small models. Work sets are not that useful. It's on big models. If everything is too slow, you can shut down some parts of it, so it, it it's a little faster. And uh, as you can see here, here is also the for me it's interesting was project uh, because here we are also using the adaptive family. As you can see, uh, how to create it in Revit uh, with the standard families? It's uh, or we should use a lot of different curtain walls, but we will become crazy if we will change a bit our, uh, for example, uh, the light section line. For example, as you can see here. So better choice for us, we are using the form and we are placing on the form our uh, future facade by adaptive points. I will show you how it looks like inside in the family. As you can see, this is our family. <laughs> looks weird, right? <laughs> but most of you already understand one nicest thing of, of this family. We can easily uh, calculate how many glass we want how many the metal we should use and we can calculate it we can send it to the manufacturer as simple as that mm -hmm. okay so you use it for uh, quantities as well yeah, uh, sorry because i am a manager and as you understand uh, the quantity and money it's the first thing what we should think <laughs> about the how it looks like uh, the client thinking only at the last point Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. 
So, guys, if you have the, any questions, if you want to see more about the building, because I have really uh, the real case right now, I can uh, I can answer, I can show everything what you want. Uh, I can show you the more about the panels if you want. about. The, yeah, I, I guess I, I do have something. If somebody w would want to get started with uh, adaptive components, uh, do you have any suggestions? Like, do you have a tutorial or uh, something that uh, they would... Where to, I have to go, go, uh, get help to, to, to create their first adaptive component? Uh, actually, on my channel, I have a lot of good tutorials about the facades. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think, in, I think like facade is the something like a suit for the uh, people. Because mm -hmm. first, what you see seeing when you're building this is a facade. If you someone not will like how it looks like uh, your exterior view, uh, only the few people will be interested in what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, as a project. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Scordi asks, uh, asks uh, what is the most complex facade you created for real project? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I, I cannot show to you guys this project, but I will try the next time, uh, mm -hmm. like share in my Instagram, just part of this building. Okay. okay. Uh, Right now, I, I I will tell you like this. I have the one project from the Mikan CK. Uh, they creating really crazy facades, and we are trying to realize it. So, this is uh, this is a company like Mikan CK really creating the craziest stuff for what you can manage. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, for, after Zaha Hadid, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess I saw on the channel the one with the kinetic facade. Oh, Do you have. You have uh, this one. I guess it's uh, a, probably a little bit similar to the one you've showed with uh, the holes in the center, but it's the same yeah. principle. Yeah, yeah where you have the adaptive, and then with Dynamo we can push uh, randomized values to the uh, adaptive components or use yeah, uh, JPEG actually, mapping. Similar at all. Uh, for example, I can show you on here. We just uh, should create uh, here, for example, the line <laughs> on the middle. And uh, this is line we will have the point which is will be offset, and that's it. For example, if the point will going uh, will go, for example, down, all the panels will be closing. Also, the following mm -hmm. the points. It's it's really in the same idea. Even here, the same idea. You, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, if you will create one adaptive family and you will try to create another adaptive family, you will understand how it's work. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. All kinetic facade working by this idea. It's just following the points. That's it. All right. Oh, well. Actually, I have the, one of the last my tutorial about the uh, sheltering uh, of the building. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. you want to yeah, give us a preview of that? Say, say, same idea. Oh, I, I don't think so right now. I will open it if you can. <laughs> you can do it. Okay. So, uh, as I said, guys, uh, even if you don't know Dynama, you can create with uh, Adaptive Family a really interesting thing and manipulate with data. Uh, you don't need to know a lot of the uh, things like, uh, for example, the geometry, like algebra. It will be, it will be uh, best point. It will be nice for you. But if you don't know that, still you will create something interesting mm -hmm. yeah and the dynamo scripts i was surprised that they didn't seem to be too complex i would expect you know, to create uh, the randomized it would be big scripts but it's actually uh, relatively simple oh they're asking uh, how to create the glass actually it's easy to create the glass you're creating your points for example use all this reference play, uh, reference line uh i will introduce why for example, if you're using the reference line here, and let me will copy, I will show you the why you should use the reference line, and I will place it here somewhere. For example, here is the reference line. You can see it, green one. And here, for example, it will be uh, it will be just a model line, as you can see. If I will use the model line and I will create, for example, geometry like this, it doesn't matter which geometry you will create. You will know. You not will able to change now uh, the basement. As you can see, it's gone because you're using the model line. But the reference to line have the another way. If you will create it, you still, as you can see here, you can use this uh, reference line. And the people asking how I can create the glass. It's really easy. You have the some shape. 
you select your shape, creating the form, using the flat one, and selecting this um, surface. And don't forget about the material. Everything in my project calculating by material. I'm trying to calculate everything by material. That's why if uh, I will change now material to the glass, it will be easy to calculate in my main project uh, how many glasses I have. It's something like that. All right, thanks for that. Uh, Damir says, too bad that Revit is still one core software. Shame if that is not using all CPU cores. Would be better and faster for a model if it is so. It's true. And, yeah, and <laughs> Ryan asks, so do you use group groups to stack interior of buildings and place skin around exterior? Sorry if you showed that already. I guess it's lacking more about how you would model the interior on big projects. Actually, I don't like groups. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, I, I will introduce why. The group's nice thing if you are working, uh, let's say, with not so complex building. When you are working with the, some complex building, you are already trying to automatize, uh, making more automatic things. For example, like uh, parameters, like the, I don't know, even some comments, you are trying to make it automatic one. Let me show you. I think better to show everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for example, here is the panel. This is not just a panel, as you already, uh, as I already introduced you guys. This is panel have a lot of different information, like the comments, as you can see. This is not just the comments. This is uh, like a copy, uh, like a, a special code. Uh, so, and it's also they have the name where it's located. Inside, also they have a lot of the different parameters, as you can see here. The name of this uh, type of the panel. Uh, again, the Kobe ID, so assembly code, so we are calling it Kobe. And uh, also the size of this uh, panel. For example, if I'm using the groups for the some elements, and after that I'm trying to use Dynamo to optimize all the uh, filling parameter. Groups, I should um, blow up. Because uh, Dynamo, I don't know why Dynamo not will, cannot go inside to the groups, change the parameter and close the, the groups. Uh, Dynamo always asking, uh, can I uh, just delete these groups? Always like that. That's why I don't like the use the groups at all. Or yeah, yeah. they manually typing all the parameters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, about groups, I saw the, the Rivet Kid had uh, uh, Aaron Maller uh, on the show last week. And they had uh, interesting discussions about uh, using groups or links in Revit. You can have a, a look on this channel. So uh, more interesting questions. Is there any option in Revit to create very complex organic form? Oh, for organic form? I don't know. If I want to create organic form, I will use, uh, for sure, I will use uh, Rhino inside. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 Rhino is much better for organic forms. Yeah. And ScarDX asks, adaptive, well, he says, adaptive don't respect level. It is free placement of points. It can be annoying if you want to schedule them. So what, uh, what about scheduling? Uh, true, it's don't like the levels, but uh, still it's uh, have the elevation, as you can see. Uh, my script is, uh, I have, for example, for these panels, I have uh, my own script. Uh, I created it in Python, but you can create it by Dynamo. It doesn't matter. How it's working? It's taking the elevation. We already know the height uh, of our, each our level. And as you can see, we get here. The, it means uh, level number six. So it's just comparing elevation and uh, nearest uh, level. And we get here. It. This is special parameter. This is not a uh, standard parameter from the Revit. I'm creating it like uh, my own one. This is project parameter. Okay, so you created your own uh, level parameter, so without you can use it, it in scheduling. Mm -hmm. Without it, you don't have any chance to schedule all the panels. This is true. So you should mm -hmm. create your own dynamic scripts. Maybe I have here some uh, schedule. Let me try it because, the, as I said here, it's my real project. And as you can see, here's the a lot of different uh, schedules. Uh, it will be hard, I think. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me will try. Maybe there I have another questions. Try to find it. Yeah, that that seems like a quite a big project. <laughs> that, yeah, that has got that probably was quite a, a puzzle to set everything up, right? Yeah, 
but uh, anyway, when you already work, uh -huh. uh, I have here. Give me a second. Yeah, it's calculating by copy, as you can see, by assembly code. It's uh, they, we are taking all the panels by assembly code. It's much easier. Yeah, it's taking here. Yeah, I not will find now any special thing because uh, I should spend a lot of the time. Oh, maybe here. Give me a second. Yeah, it's here, as you can see. All information mm -hmm. about our panels. It's 5,400 <laughs> something. And as you can see here, we have the name of the family, type of the family, assembly code, uh, what is the type of the panel, uh, some comments uh, for this panel, and square meter, because we should calculate it, uh, how much it's taking, and uh, the numbers of this type of the panel. Mm -hmm. All right, so and adding your own uh, parameters can help with that for scheduling. Uh, except these two is all open parameters. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really uh, all right, so we're uh, approaching the end of the show. So if you have more uh, questions, it's uh, your last chance to ask them. Do you have uh, anything else you wanted to show? Actually, I already showed like two big projects, but uh, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what else. I think uh, my company not will uh, allow to show more <laughs> than these two projects. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're al allowed, uh, uh, let me know for sure. Yes, of course. Uh, well, I will. As you can see here, it's also the nice thing because we have, as I said, uh, two types of the panel here. We, even the I created the thickness of the glass, as you can see, it's really, really complex. One, two, and three. Even this shelter here we have, and here is we get the pattern of that. It's also really uh, important for us because here are the cars, as you can see, and uh, to understand people will see the cars inside of the building or not, and that's why the pattern is also really important for us for this building. Because uh, if you are looking the closely, you can see the car. But if you are going back, it's still like, it's coming to like one black line. Uh, thank you, Damir. <laughs> the, <laughs> or maybe for your work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that, that's quite something. Like I look at this and I got to up my uh, modeling game now. And uh, yeah, I admit I really want to try that, that script. I, th I think it's pretty cool that we've uh, uh, and mapped uh, the Autodesk logo. <laughs> yeah, I will send you. I will for sure. I will send you after. All right. Finish, I will send you. <laughs> all right. All right. Wait, but don't forget you should uh, sweep it. Uh, I mean the um, you should rotate it on the hundred thirty uh, eighty degree. Yeah, because, rotate the image. Because I, I I did mistake, but I don't think so. It's a big problem. Mm hmm. And I guess I'll need your adaptive component as well, family. Uh, okay, I will give you. Yeah, there I have only the one parameter. But uh, uh, anyway, you can, can send me what what you can, and I'll try to make a package for people uh, watching the show and put them uh, in the show notes with uh, some instruction, perhaps, because that that sounds like a, a lot of fun and okay. a great introduction <laughs> to adaptive things. And even try the, to make some condition uh, whom uh, will create much uh, interesting uh, the panels with the uh, this uh, alpha map. The question about the, how big the team for this project, uh, guys. To be honest, for this project which I'm showing to you right now, it was uh, six architects and two BM managers. That's it. That's not that that many people, I would say. No. Uh, I, there's a uh, you know there was a a skyscraper a tower project here in Quebec City, and I think there were like uh, thirty people in the architecture team working uh, on it full time. Uh, this is reality in my country because uh, mm -hmm. we are trying not spend, uh, not uh, use a lot of the uh, manpower for mm -hmm. our projects. We are trying to use as less as my as we can. But I'm not calculating the engineer constructor because uh, yeah, sure. Why it's another way. It's uh, another story. So. Yeah, and yeah. and some somebody else asked any idea how to introduce equation in order to calculate floor uh, area ratio, FAR. I'm not sure no. about that. I'm not also not sure floor area ratio. I can yeah. calculate everything, but if you will introduce me, what is that? <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. and and someone say. says more team members equal more disaster. That's true. I would say especially if 
when there's a deadline and suddenly they put on a lot of people on the project, that's when you start getting problems usually. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's really hard to manage when a lot of the mm -hmm. people you, for example, like uh, like me, like BI manager, right? I should, uh, for example, uh, checking for what uh, I get from the, my suppliers, like the, from the engineer and constructor. After that, I should understand what's going on in the architect, uh, what doing the architect. So it's really hard to manage everything. And for example, if I will have a lot of the architects, it I will become crazy because mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll, we are all the people. We understand that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, and somebody there's someone who really wants you to uh, share the specs of uh, your computer. Oh, for. Okay, I will try to do that. So it's not. Yeah, so well, you mentioned how much RAM you have. I guess that's not the truth. So we need the full specs. Especially in my PC, where is that? Uh, I have Core Core i7, I think, uh, right now in my home PC, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the RAM. About the graphic card, it doesn't it doesn't matter which you are using. Uh, for example, we can use some in the middle class segment. It will be pretty enough. Mm -hmm. So. Don't think like if you will use the RTX card, you will fly here. No, it's not working. No, not, not in Revit. It's good if you're uh, doing uh, renderings and, and stuff like that. But inside Revit, it, it doesn't really have the, that much of an effect. And yeah, six to five to six team members sounds, sounds like a good number. And somebody says, my God, eight people for this project. You just back. Uh, yeah, I agree. That's a really small team. You probably worked... Uh, a lot of overtime, I'm guessing. There, one more thing, because uh, guys, don't think like this is six people, just random people. They, this is team. They understand how work with in team. So this is really mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. Because we have in my company, we have uh, small teams inside our company. We have small teams architects. So and um, as you understand, when we have the small teams, uh, they are working like uh, one. Uh, really like like one people mm -hmm. uh, they separating like for example one guy going for this tower another guy going for this tower and the other going for the you know, ground floor this is all right so um i will slowly bring uh the show to an end is there any anything else you wanted to share or plug mention i guess well people can go to your uh uh, YouTube channel, just type in yes, Nico G. Yes, just subscribe on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a pretty good start. Anything else you wanted to mention? Actually, guys, I have an also not so small channel. You can check it. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly uh, I'm trying to introduce some complex uh, tutorials. Mm -hmm. Not just some, uh, for example, how to create, uh, I don't know, how to use the um, curtain wall. No. My idea in my channel, I'm trying to create some big project from the scratch because uh, all beginners, uh, like architects, BI managers, they don't know from what they should start. That's why mm -hmm. I'm trying to show how to create the project from the zero. So mm -hmm. I'm not trying to introduce you how to become BIM manager because uh, everyone has their own way. And my way, it's not uh, a lot, uh, not uh, will be work for you guys, uh, mm -hmm. because I saw the comment how to become BM manager, and I don't know how. I just uh, follow, following my uh, my vision, and uh, I'm here. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, my tip is try to help other people and, and teach. When you learn something cool, share it uh, with uh, other other folks, and that will help you for sure. And James says, uh, even worse than a bunch of people at the end, is if you have to pause. During your pause, your people who know the project get reassigned, and you have to familiarize new people at the end. Yeah, well, I, yeah. When a big project is paused in the middle, it's always a, uh, it's always hard to come back to it. Uh, yeah, for sure. So I will mention the next episode of uh, Revit Pure Live. Episode twenty three will be next week with Nahama. Uh, from Israel, and we'll be talking about uh, the environment plugin for Revit. Uh, this should be pretty interesting. Uh, the latest pamphlet, the pamphlets are a PDF guide that I sent by email, was about landscape, and I've explored this plugin. But it is really a fascinating plugin. So if you struggle with landscape, make sure to have a look at this episode. 
And so thanks, Nico, for uh, joining the show. Everybody check out uh, Nico's, Nico's great YouTube channel if you want to learn more about adaptive components. And I will try to set up uh, some sort of sample file so people can check out what, we've, uh, uh, what we've learned today. Uh, thank you. All right. So thank you, everybody. And see you next week at the same time for uh, the next episode uh, about the environment plugin for Revit. Uh, see you, everybody. Bye-bye.